I think archaeologists are storytellers to record things that we don't know about the past and, and engage people with those stories because otherwise there's very little point in, in doing it. When I first heard about these, uh, this burial um, ground in Brighton, I was over the moon. Obviously because I've never worked with human remains from the city that I've adopted, Brighton. The Quaker site, is, it's an interesting aspect of the project because we knew it was there to some extent. There's, there's old maps from the early 19th century which which show where the Quaker meeting house used to be. And it had a long plot of, of ground stretching all the way up the full length between North Street and what's now Church Street, and that was known as Quaker's Croft. What's significant about that plot in general, and that meeting house in particular, was in the 17th century, the Quakers were persecuted. You know, they, they had to meet almost in secret in each other's houses. From that period, they acquired this permanent sort of base of operations and, and the first known Quaker in the whole region in, in Brighton was probably the first person to be buried in that cemetery in about 1700. We found in total 18 individuals. These were represented by both males and females, adults and also subadults. By subadults we mean any individual younger than 18 years of age. In comparison with other contemporary skeletal populations, these Quakers, for instance, were not buried with any item of personal adornment. In other words, we didn't find an individual with rings or rosaries or anything like that. It was a plain burial, all similar, all the same. In general patterns, what I can see is that at least the adults live till a long age. In other words, they passed 45 years of age, which for a population of 200 years ago is a good rate of survival. I've got two individuals here. One of them has no teeth at all. And also they show osteoarthritis in a number of joints as well, which is indicative of old age. Two of the adults suffer from a metabolic disease called DISH. Basically, this is a condition that today we find in clinical patients who are 50 years of age or older. They are obese and they also have type 2 diabetes. This wouldn't really go along with the picture of what we think about the Quakers. They try to have a humble way of life, no excess, no drinking alcohol, no smoking, not even eating sugar, because they, they were campaigning against slavery. But what I see in the teeth is, is a lot of cavities, uh, which suggests that they might have eaten sweet stuff. And I also found uh, graves in the teeth, suggesting that they would have um, clenched the stem of a uh, abrasive clay pipe. You measure how thriving a society is, by looking at death rates, especially in the subadal population. We know that 200 years ago, children struggled to pass adolescency. So it seems like while they were young and children and babies, they struggled, but once they were adults, they were able to live a long age.